The DJI Air 3 was released in July 2023 and has since been unboxed and reviewed to death. But three important questions for me remained unanswered until now. One, can it really produce 48 megapixel photos? Two, is it the digital zoom any good in video mode? And three, up to what ISO value would I confidently shoot video? If those questions have been bothering you as well, stay tuned. Welcome to Kit in the Kitchen. If your finger is now hovering over the unsubscribe button, don't. This will always be first and foremost a channel about little known historic sites. It's just that, occasionally, tests and thoughts on equipment are necessary. And I thought I should share those with you. I recently decided to sell my trusted DJI Mavic 2 Pro and get the Air 3 instead. No upgrade, but utter madness? A downgrade? No, it's at least a side grade. Hear me out. The battery life, the Ocus Inc. 4 protocol, the massively improved intelligent flight modes, it's all two generations more advanced. But the real reason is the second 70mm equivalent camera. Especially as it is, apart from the focal length, an exact copy of the wide-angle camera. The possibilities this gives me are truly stunning. See for yourselves. And I'm still only practicing. Now, the downgrade part lies in the sensor. Only 12 instead of the old 20 megapixel and in the missing variable aperture. A right old bother when you are trying to follow the 180 degree shutter rule. I've given this some careful thought, weighed with the experience of flying the fantastic Mavic 2 Pro for more than two years. And here are my reasons. The pixel size on the Air 3 is 2.4 micrometers, exactly the same as on the Mavic 2 Pro. However, the smaller sensor is of a more modern, stacked design, which gives it better light collecting efficiency. Each of these pixels seems to have some position weight readout that effectively, so DGI claims, gives us four positions per pixel, and that would be 48 megapixel in total, using some digital hocus pocus I don't even begin to understand. But then, computational imaging has generally come a long way. The 180 degree shutter rule. Drone shots are by their nature fairly long distance anyway, so motion blur tends to be not so crucial for the cinematic look. And I can, on top of slight variations of shutter speed, vary the ISO value a bit, and that should enable me not to land every five minutes and replace ND filters. Last but not least, I find myself using the drone 95% for video. And 4K video uses less than the 1 over 1.3 inch sensor of the AR3 anyway. So no loss of resolution there. Now, to answer the three questions, here's what I did. Number one, is the digital zoom in video any good? Let's start with the wide angle lens, 24 mm equivalent. I took a series of pictures starting at a distance of 120 cm, the close focusing limit of the Air 3 is about 100 cm. I then increased that distance successively by 60 cm in each step and increased the digital zoom by half a stop. That keeps the relative proportions constant, which means the chart is always at the same size. Here's the first picture showing the fraction of the whole image taken up by the resolution chart. There's no digital zoom here. By the way, I have done the same sequence using careful manual focus and all results are the same. We are now looking at the autofocus pictures only. It makes no difference. This is the same picture with the resolution chart magnified to more or less fill the frame. 
This is the second picture with the distance increased from 120 cm to 180 cm and the digital zoom set to factor 1.5. This is the third picture with the distance increased to 240 cm and the digital zoom set to a factor 2. I think the result is immediately clear, but since I took the trouble of shooting, measuring, adjusting them all, let's have a look at the remaining pictures up to the full factor 3 digital zoom. I think we can agree that from the very first step, here are pictures 1 and 2 again, we see a dramatic drop in resolution. As you would expect when there's nothing else going on than crop and resizing, the classical digital zoom. Now, one wouldn't expect there to be any difference, but for the sake of diligence, let me show you the first two similar pictures using the 70mm camera. The same result. Even at the first small step, the loss of resolution is obvious. Question number two. Can it shoot 48 megapixel images? Let's compare two shots of the resolution chart. Here's the 12 megapixel image. The resolution chart occupies one seventh of the vertical sensor space. Given that the values on the chart stand for 100 lines per picture height, the resolution that I can see here corresponds to 2800 lines vertical on the sensor, or, you can do the maths yourself, 11 megapixel. That is reassuringly close to the quoted sensor resolution, so our method seems to be okay. Now on to the second image, shot with a 48 megapixel setting. Hands up, I don't fully understand what's going on here, but basically each pixel of the stacked sensor can be read out in a position-weighted way, thus creating optimistically four subdivisions of each single pixel, which brings you mathematically to the 12 times 4 equals 48 megapixel resolution. Let's have a closer look. Indeed, it is immediately clear that we are looking at a picture with much more information. Well done, DGI, whatever sneaky method you are using here. Now, using the same by now proven method as with a 12 megapixel picture, let's have a look at the closest lines we can distinguish. For my eyes, that is 600 lines per picture height and, given that we have again occupied one seventh of the sensor height, that translates to 23 megapixel. Not 48, but still respectable and better than my trusted old Mavic 2 Pro with that wonderful Hasselblad 20 megapixel camera. The ISO question is a wee bit arbitrary. Where do you personally draw the line? Let's just have a look at the picture sequence shot with a 70mm camera. The two cameras really behave completely similar. Increasing the ISO value from 100 all the way to 6400 in 100 ISO steps. I would certainly use ISO 800 and perhaps ISO 1600 if I really had to. That gives me the equivalent of three to four stops of aperture. Not ideal, but as the way I shoot, the light usually doesn't change much within a few minutes. I think I'll get away with it. So, conclusion. Here are the three answers. 1. Is the digital zoom any good for video? Answer: No, it's complete rubbish as expected. 2. Can the Air 3 shoot 48 megapixel images? Answer: By the looks of it, not 48, but a very respectable 20, and that means still images at least on par with the Mavic 2 Pro. 3. What is the usable ISO range? Answer: I would happily shoot between 100 and 1600. That's four stops. Thanks for watching. And although I normally don't say it, please do subscribe, like, comment. It really helps the channel. Oh, and you can hit that bell as well. It's never going to bother you with weekly messages. Goodbye.